Hey folks, and welcome to our special series on the Enneagram and Wings. My name is Anthony Skinner, I'm the producer of the show, and before we go any further, we have to introduce the host of our show, Ian Cron. Ian, welcome to the show. <laughs> Glad to be here. Okay, so we, uh, we of course, the, 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 the dominant theme is Wings, of course, this is why we're here, but we have a little sub-theme going on. You made fun of me because I used to have this blank gray background and yeah. uh, you said it was something like I was like broadcasting from Folsom prison. <laughs> yeah, it was nothing. Now you got that Johnny Swim picture, our friends, uh, our Abner friends. and Amanda up there. Yes. And you, you've got a record player behind you, which, you know, so you can play vinyl, which I'm very impressed by. Yes. And, and so it looks like you actually are living someplace that is habitable for humans. <laughs> right. So when we talked about the record player, I said uh, off the cuff, you know what? We're going to feature a great record that everyone should be listening to or listen to at some point uh, with every episode of the series. And today is boom. Ah! Yes. Okay. Oh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Damn oh. Torpedoes, the infamous third record. Golly whiz, man. You know, there's been a couple artists that when when they died, mm. I I was literally like mournful. I mean, honestly mournful for days. Mm -hmm. uh, one was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Mm. Uh, one was Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one was Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, Aretha. Mm -hmm. And oh, Tom man. Petty hit me like a ton of bricks because yeah. didn't see it coming. And he was one of the best songwriters ever. Mm -hmm. Same. That one hit me hard, too. I, I was stunned and, uh, and really sad for a couple of days. And you know why? Why? Because you're a four, and today <laughs> we're talking about fours <laughs> and their wings. What a great segue. Yeah, so we, uh, we receive a lot of you know, questions from our listeners about wings. And uh, even though sometimes we get to touch on... Uh, wings in different episodes. There's so much more to wings than people realize. Let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, often people think uh, wings simply offer an added layer of clarity about their type, mm -hmm. which is true, right? Like you get a finer set of distinctions as a result of knowing your wing, but there's so much more to them than just adding more ways of describing yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So let's start with the basics. Tell us a little bit about what wings are and then we'll dive into some stuff that people may not know about them. Yeah, okay, so the term wing or wings refers to the types or numbers on either side of your dominant type. So let's say if you're a type six, for instance, you could either have a five or a seven wing and, and typically, one of those two wings influences your personality type more than the other. And we call this your dominant wing. So to be clear, you can't be a six with a four and a one wing, right? <laughs> no. And, you know, people, I swear, at every single workshop, so, some sweet person comes up and they go, you know, I think I'm a three with a seven and a eight wing. And I'll be like... <laughs> I'll look at my clock. I'll, I'm looking. I'm going. You, make sure you stay for the rest of the day because <laughs> that stay, ain't possible. Be sure you stay for session four. Stay, yeah, because that's the scramble that's, gram that's, so far. That's right. So your wings can only be the two numbers adjacent to your main type. That's right. Right. So what exactly does a wing do? All right. So think of your dominant wing like salt and pepper, or you know, some kind of seasoning, right? Uh, your dominant wing flavors your core type with some of its characteristic traits and resources. Mm. So, for example, I'm I'm a four with a three wing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means, and, and we've spoken about. Uh, well, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So uh, let's not use that as an example. Um, let's say I was a, a five with a four wing. Okay. So uh, what would be happening is that dominant four wing. I would be picking up some of its characteristic traits and features, its assets, its liabilities, uh, and it would color my four in a very, very unique way. Mm -hmm. 
So let's talk about... By the way, that doesn't mean that your other wing is completely dead to you, right? Right, right, right. And we'll talk about that later. But but your dominant wing, that's, we're going to start there. Yeah, dom- the dominant influence. Um, so let's talk about um, some more reasons why it would be important to know your wings. Yeah, so wings are important because they reveal a whole different side of your personality. And they can explain, I think this is cool. They can explain contradictory elements within your personality, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to see that as we talk about fours, okay? Uh, It can also explain why people who share the same type can look very, very different from each other. So I'm a four with a three. Yeah. I have a dear friend um, whose name I'll even say, Don Chaffer. Uh is a four with a five wing. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Don. Yeah. If, are are those two different? Very very different. Very different energies. Very different ways of being in the world. Two different presentations. Yep. So it does explain oftentimes why two people the same type can look very, very different from each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does everyone's dominant wing uh, equally influence their main type or or are there variations? Yeah, oh, that's a great question. Yeah, there are gradations. So your core type will always dominate. But if your wing is so strong that it competes with your core personality type, we call that a heavy wing. Mm-hmm. Now, there's moderate wings. There are light wings. But I just want to focus for a moment on heavy wings because if you have a heavy wing, it can make it difficult to discern your type Mm. because your core number and your wing exert nearly equal influence on your, on your person. Do you Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like they're almost equal. So like I'm a four with a three wing, particularly when I was younger, dude, it would have been hard sometimes to know if I was a three or a four. Right. I was in that. The influence of three on my four was really strong. Right. I was ambitious. Yep. I was all kinds of stuff that looked very three ish, but my unconscious motivation was definitely four. Right. right. For sure. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that's an interesting thing that, you know, as people are trying to discern their type, you're thinking, well, am I identifying with a strong heavy wing or with, is it my core type? And then they have to really go look at unconscious motivations to, to figure it out. This is exciting. I think it's going to give people a lot of clarity. Um, so uh, let's take a look at each of the types. And we are we went through the gut triad earlier. Um, and now we're in the heart triad. We're talking about fours today. Um, let's talk about uh, what the wings look like, the influence of the wings on the four. Yeah. So if you identify as an individualist or a four, Mm -hmm. you could be a four with a three wing or a four with a five wing. Now, let me talk about fours with three wings first. Okay. okay? That combination is sandwiched between the performer, right? uh, And the observer, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So fours with a dominant three wing want to be both unique and the best. I mean, this is this Torture is me chamber. Tea, man. I mean, check. Okay, right. Um, their energy is competitive, and they have enough of the threes' image consciousness mm-hmm. that they're more aware than other fours of the need to kind of dial back their emotional intensity and their kind of quirky idiosyncrasies in order to be socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. Like, right. like, you know. Um, a four with a five is not as concerned about that as a four with a three. Right, right. Uh, so anyway, and with the added energy of the three, they're, they're going to be more outgoing, which translates to being sometimes more dramatic. Mm-hmm. And second, they're going to be more productive turning dreams and ideas into reality than fours with fives. Mm-hmm. So both of these tendencies show, I think, the fours desire to be noticed. Mm -hmm. And often these fours have uh, more frequent mood swings than fours with a five wing. Yeah, just before we move on to the next one, could you touch a little bit on how 
you know, that struggle, you, you, you address it a little bit, but that tension between the, uh, the authenticity, the need for the authenticity of the four and the performer of the three, that's a unique kind of a struggle. Yeah, and we've talked about this a lot on the show mm-hmm. um, because we like to talk about ourselves. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a struggle. And there, okay, so there's an example of contradictory elements in the same personality. Mm-hmm. So thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. You know, sometimes there's parts of us that we're just loaded. Human beings are loaded with contradictions. Yes. And, and so if you are a four with a three wing, part of you wants to be seen and competitive and noticed and, and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The other part of you is sensitive and is very much concerned about authenticity mm-hmm. and wants to punish the three wing for wanting to be seen right? and, and wanting to be a chameleon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, these are contradictory elements in your personality. And I love the, fa- the, the fact that you would know this. Can you imagine that what it, must be for some people because otherwise you, you kind of feel like you're going crazy a little bit, right? Yeah, totally. And you'll, you'll beat the bejesus out of yourself yeah. all the time. You know, so I'm at a, a Al-Anon meeting the other night mm-hmm. and this guy said something. He just said when it was so beautiful. He just said, he was, about, he was about 70. He said, you know, one day I just woke up and I realized that I just needed to embrace the fact that I'm a contradiction. Mm, wow. And I thought, you got to be old enough to say that. But you don't, <laughs> but you don't have to be. If you learn the Enneagram, you'll find out pretty fast, you know, like, yeah, we're loaded with contradictions and wings help explain them. That's good. Okay, so let's move on to four wing five. Yeah, these folks are l- more likely to be introverted and unconventional. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're more, these would be more the bohemian types, um, more interested in the avant-garde, uh, more, um, yeah, attracted to the eccentric, Mm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Very concerned with uniqueness, but they have less need to be noticed by an audience than a four with a three. Okay. Okay. So they're, they're, they are quietly different. And as I want to, I want to emphasize the word eccentric. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, Mm -hmm really what they are. They spend more time alone and they find it easier just to let their emotions be Mm. without having to talk about them or Mm. respond with some kind of action. You know, fours with threes be more, more inclined to talk about them or act. Mm -hmm. Whereas four of this four or five can be a little more Zen like. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I, and I always Mm. use him as an example, but since it's a music, that music day and because I love him, Mm. Definitely David Byrne, Talking Heads. Watch watch interviews with him, and you will see a, that four with five. I can mm. well maybe five to four, four with five. I can't really tell, but that that the energy of that it. combo, yeah. So, uh, could you address a little bit uh, the idea that wings aren't aren't static, but they're real opportunities for for growth? Yeah, thank you, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so people tend to th- again think of wings as like okay, just added information, right, about my type. It's fixed. You know, yeah. It's fixed, right? But actually, they're developmental resources. Mm-hmm. Meaning, so for example, me as a four of the three. Right now, my three ring is very heavy. That's a mm-hmm. new word for us. Mm-hmm. It's not, I'm not burning a lot of calories being the guy on screen right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not burning a lot of calories um, because I'm leaning actually further into my three wing than normal you, mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and right. because it's my dominant wing it's not a ton of work yeah but there are times like right now when i'm writing so much stuff so much content book this stuff other stuff i spend a lot of time alone with if you saw my office here you know what it looks like it's piled sure. with yes yeah i'm alone i'm studying i'm researching i'm um enjoy, I, I find time with people more depleting. Mm. Um, y- you know what I mean? And yeah. yet, but I've, what I've done here is I've made a conscious, intentional decision. I love that. That I am going to get up today and and rely on, uh, lean on my five wing. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people realize that the fluidity of it. Mm-hmm. They just think it's, you know, four, three. I mean, it's just, it's like, 
Right. This the, the whole Enneagram system is dynamic. It moves. It's yes. fluid. So, you know, some days you can, you know, and you can lean in over here. But and maybe it would happen naturally. But but one thing's for sure, if you do it intentions, intentionally and consciously, then you know that you're drawing resources from places as you need them. And they yes. are just knowing they're available to you is awesome. Yes. Oh, I love that. It's great. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed this uh, episode of Enneagram and Wings, focusing on the four. Yeah. And um, look forward to the next episode where we'll be touching on fives. Until then, peace. Until, yeah, until then, damn the torpedoes. That's right. <laughs>